The Dallas Elder Care Channel is brought to you by John Vermillion and the great folks at the Vermillion Law Firm. Today's guest is Kent Schroeder, community sales leader for Holiday Retirement. Hello, this is John Vermillion. I am a, a local estate planning attorney in Dallas, Texas, and I'm one of the sponsors of the Elder Care Channel. And today we have Kent Schroeder with us. Kent is a, I guess you call yourself a sales leader, correct? which would be, in my thinking, a sales manager of what's called Holiday Retirement. That's correct. And uh, Kent, uh, we are regularly highlighting providers of service to the senior committee on the Elder Care Channel. And today we'd like to talk to you about holiday retirement and how that fits into the uh, whole scheme of, of long-term care options for senior citizens. Uh, tell me a little bit about holiday retirement and uh, uh, what, your, what your primary focus is when you're providing services to the senior community. Sure. Uh, Holiday Retirement is a company that actually brought the concept of independent living for seniors to the marketplace back in the early 70s. Um, So we are uh, an independent living company uh, with our communities, 308 nationwide. Now, now, well, how does that when you say independent living versus Mm -hmm. what we refer to as assisted living? Yeah. What would be what would be some of the uh, traits or the the parameters of an independent living facility. Right. Uh, unlike a medical institution such as assisted living, memory care, or skilled nursing units, we are not a licensed medical facility or community. Um, we are providing uh, certain services and amenities, and um, you know, payment for uh, certain living expenses, and then taking that onus away, providing meals, etc. Uh, but we do not have a uh, medical supervision okay. or um, on our staff, the staff is not uh, medical providers. Okay, so you would kind of be one of those uh, interim facilities when people want to get out of their house perhaps, but they're not ready for assisted living and they're they're looking for uh, the camaraderie of a, of a, a senior communal environment where right. they can be have, you know, friends and, and uh, socialization but they don't really need care per se. Now, what happens if a resident moves into uh, a holiday retirement facility and they later need, say, home health care? Right. What happens at that point? Well, that's an important differentiation of the holiday communities versus other options that are out there. Uh, what Holiday has done is a, is a very uh, committed um, uh, action to go ahead and put resources in place within the community to allow our residents to have their holiday communities remain their home long term. I see. Versus the traditional model is you might start in an independent living and, and a lot of folks think, well, that means a, a Dell Web sort of thing. Ah, okay. Uh, that definition has actually changed. Of course, Dell, that would be a Dell Web would be, I think, more of a subdivision. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, uh, mm-hmm. Or they might think that we're like a 55 or 62 and older mm-hmm. apartment community. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are not. We are a retirement community with everything that that means. Uh, now, where we differentiate ourselves, and we have found a, a niche for ourselves, is to have this initiative where we have put uh, personnel and protocol in place so our residents, when they need, if they need, should they need uh, care, it's available to them. Uh, we have sort the of on a, on a contract basis. Right. So, okay. Right. We, have, we have officing in our communities, uh, home health care agencies that are part of the fabric, but they're not part of what they're So this would be like an add-on to the... Uh, monthly rent that a that a resident yeah, would pay. Yeah, okay. they, uh, they would negotiate, you know, the type of services they need and the cost thereof, et cetera. What I, if you consider yourself an independent living uh, 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 operation, mm-hmm. when would it be appropriate for a resident, say, to maybe have gotten to the point where they've surpassed what you can provide you need, they need uh, mm-hmm. extra care? When, when would you uh, say that that would occur? Uh, there's a couple scenarios and okay. they're lined out in uh, our lease, the fact that if they become uh, what it says, a danger to themselves or others, the danger to themselves is a wandering. Okay. Um, certain types of dementia will manifest themselves with uh, you know, the urge to, to wander. Being independent, unlike the medical institutions, we don't do lockdowns. Gotcha. Um, so we can't, you know, we can't take the in other words, somebody with that condition could just walk out of the facility that would not be appropriate for them. Right. So, right. Gotcha. Um, okay. The other thing there is um, an ideology of uh, Alzheimer's that they become quite violent and that mm. would again indicate a memory care arena. Um, 
if not only they, they might uh, walk off or something, but they, they would uh, might if not only be dangerous to themselves, they might be dangerous to another another resident. Or Correct. Yeah. Or or staff or even a home health care worker. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have That's to true. Be, we have to be mindful of that. Um, the other thing it does state in, and I'm going to paraphrase here a little bit in the lease, is that um, they are indicating to us that with or without assistance, uh, they can live an independent lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. um, that does not mean that there is not some uh, decline that comes with aging or there might have been a medical event. That we're all, we're all going in one direction. A little so, firm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so if they do need those resources available without having to be uprooted mm -hmm. and then move to a step up unit you know, like an assisted living or memory care. We're trying, right, to, right. trying to keep them in their homes and have them take advantage of the home health care agency. Uh, we also have um, a different company providing physical therapy, occupational therapy and speech therapy. And then we have a company that is a senior care company and his team will actually replicate the non-clinical services that are provided mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what they call the ADLs. And I'm sure your audience knows what the ADLs are. Now, I would assume if, if you're a, a considered an independent facility, you have lots of activities and uh, uh, field trips and, and things of that nature. Yes, there's a daily slate of, of activities that you know does rotate and it stays very um, expansive and there is a variety. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, weekly lectures. Uh, weekly happy hours, uh, special events twice a week, um, different activities, you know, like you said, the monthly outing, right. uh, outings to lunch once a week. Um, and being independent, that's a little bit different in some other business models that are out there, that it is the resident's choice to partake or not. There you uh, go. They can look at the menu and say, that's not really for me. Uh, whereas, it's, not, it's not part of a protocol of treatment no, or something. No, yeah, right, right. 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 Yeah, uh, so we give them that flexibility, but yeah, there's they can determine how much time they want to spend in their apartments or right, you know, out right. of their apartments. Well, it's, it's something you just said a few minutes ago was very interesting about a progression of health, and we know that as we age, we I guess absent uh, miraculous cures to right. aging, right. we're uh, we're all kind of going in one direction. So I can see where somebody is still able to care for themselves and lead an independent lifestyle, but they may not want to. It may not be a. It may be too hard for them to maintain their home. Right, right. Uh, or they, uh, uh, it's too big, or it's you know it's it's it got a lot of expenses in maintaining the home. So, uh, being in the the independent living facility is sort of a transition. Everything sort of seems to be a transition, you know. Yeah. Let me ask you: Do you have some residents that stay there until until they pass away? You know. Oh, uh, indeed. Yeah, we do. Uh, at the community that we're going to refer to, the Bentley, we've had a couple people that have been um, blessed to go ahead and go through hospice in their apartment homes at the Bentley. So it's a it's a pretty wide range of care that is made available to them, just not in a clinical setting per se. Now, why would uh, somebody who wanted to get out of their house and, and move to an independent living facility, why would they choose a holiday retirement facility? I know one that comes to mind is called the, the Bentley, correct? Correct. Uh -huh. why, would, why would they choose uh, one of your facilities over, say, a, a competitor? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, the fact that We've been doing it longer and we hope better okay. uh, right. than some other companies. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, about 43 years. Uh, wow. Yeah, they, wow. Brought, they brought the concept to the marketplace, Holiday did. Uh, and you know, we have a certain, we think, critical mass in being the market leader in the independent niche uh, that we are still kind of determining what does it mean to be independent living community in 2016 versus right. prior years right. or decades. Um, so to answer your question, uh, the fact that not only do you get the, what I'll call the traditional menu of amenities and services, but we do have these um, clinical resources that are embedded into the fabric of a holiday community that is going to allow these residents to live there just as long as, as it makes sense. Well, that comes to mind. How many facilities does uh, Holiday Retirement have? Uh, 308. And then they, where are they located? Primarily in the United States with a couple in Mexico and a couple in China. How many do you have in the Dallas area? 11. Okay. Are they, uh, when we say Dallas area, of course, that could be pretty big. Uh, right. They're, uh, say like in, in Dallas. In Dallas, uh, there's, in Dallas proper, there's really just two of us that have the Dallas address. Okay. And then um, we go out to the suburbs or something. Yeah. Then, okay. you know, then we're between Arlington and Denton, uh, okay. Richardson, Plano. But with 11 in what we call the DFW Metroplex, there should be one fairly close to 
yeah. uh, to yeah. anybody where, right. wherever they would want to go. And it is healthy uh, that when seniors do transition, uh, it has been proven if they can kind of stay on their, their turf in familiar areas, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, that is a benefit to them. So we, even amongst yeah, ourselves, close well, to old friends, family, their church, church uh, exactly right. Yeah. Their doctors, mm -hmm. you know, so that uh, that could, that yeah. could be a problem. So uh, the other reason I think, you know, in terms of a value statement, um, what you get for your dollar spent at a holiday retirement is going to be top notch. Without Good. being, you're not going to be paying a premium. Yeah. We don't we don't do buy-ins. We don't do things of that nature. Um, so is it just a, a straight rental? It is uh, it's arrangement a like, month, a lease. Month, like a lease. Like a lease. Okay. Yeah, it's not a okay. Lease. Well, yeah, because sometimes you find out, you know, there's a lot of other bells and whistles right. and that can cause problems at the time of, of uh, illness or death and, right. and, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, well, I know I personally have had some clients that have resided in one of your facilities and I think they're very happy. So I, I'd like to throw yeah. that out to the uh, Elder Care Channel viewers. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, it's, uh, I think, a very uh, interesting uh, sort of I don't I'm trying to think of what, the fusion you have here between independent living that sort of morphs into assisted living. Uh, somebody could could have contract home health care and stay there until they died as long as they were uh, within your parameters of not harming themselves or other people. Right. And they're and not being better. And that is another <laughs> element of being independent versus going to an assisted living. Well, you're using their staff. And the particular client that I was referring to a few moments ago was interested in applying for for benefits from the VA. Mm -hmm. And we knew that the the rent at an independent facility would not count as an unreimbursed medical expense to help qualify for those VA benefits, but those home health care expenses where people yes. come in would. Yeah. So we certainly want to encourage those uh, residents who may be able to qualify for VA benefits or other benefits to at least consult with an attorney and uh, an elder care attorney or a VA attorney and, right. and find out if uh, they can get some help because uh, the rent may not count, but the other other uh, right. other yeah. expenses might. Uh, you're exactly right. We do have residents that are getting aid and attendance, mm -hmm. but it is something that we don't navigate or you know for them. We do lead right. them to attorneys, right, or other ombudsmen that are out there. That that's exactly that right. To expedite the process for you know, and uh, so um, uh, this is kind of an eye-opening. Uh, analyzing uh, holiday retirement has been very eye-opening to me because uh, you know. If, Right off the bat, if somebody says, well, I'm moving into uh, the Bentley that's managed by holiday retirement, I would say, well, that's independent living. That won't count for VA benefits. We need to go a step further and make sure that uh, right. that we uh, analyze uh, their other expenses. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here today. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, when we have the video on the Elder Care channel, we will have your contact information so we don't have to repeat it now. But is there anything you'd like to tell the viewers of the Elder Care channel about uh, holiday retirement in summation. I just want to you know, thank John Vermillion for this platform and uh, the opportunity to let you know how holiday is you know, trying to change the definition of independent living uh, going forward from 2016. And uh, we welcome anybody to visit one of our communities and make an informed decision. Well, Kent, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, we hope everybody will take a look at uh, a holiday retirement community right. and when needed. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah.